And can we give them a little round of applause as they do that? Hey, honey. Very good. And Dawn, Evelyn, Pastor Christy, Aunty Dawn's coming, and um, Rosemary's on her way up. She's uh, going to do a big entrance from behind, a big, like, big reveal. It's going to be great. Um, but what we've, uh, we've done is asked um, a few of the mums in the house to um, come and join us this morning, um, and we're going to ask them a couple of questions. And they're going to share a little bit of their wisdom with us. Um, for those of you who don't know, this is my beautiful wife, Pastor Christy. I call her that at home, Pastor Christy. <laughs> Wonderful, Evelyn. <laughs> hey, Rosemary. And this is Dawn. <laughs> and the amazing Rosemary. <laughs> Very good. And this isn't one of the mums. This is, this is Ron. <laughs> Very cool. How are you guys? Good? Good? What's it like up on stage from this view? This is the view that I get. You just realise I can see when you're sleeping. <laughs> no, kidding, kidding, kidding. So this is good. So the idea behind this is... Um, I could come up on stage on, on, a, on a Mother's Day Sunday and talk about uh, essentially what the scriptures say, um, but um, I probably don't have much clout when it comes to being a mum. It's probably not going to be my area of expertise. So I thought, why don't we get some absolute legends within our house and legends in the faith to share a little bit uh, of what they've learnt over their life. Is that okay? Yeah. Very good. So... Let's start off here with a couple of questions. Before I... Um, I had something on my heart. Sorry, this is off script and a little bit different. The, um, there's, a, there's, a, there's a big issue in our society around um, our, some of the way we do things. We are all aware of that. And there is a federal election coming up, and I'm not going to get into big political talk about who to vote for and stuff, but I do want to encourage us as faith-filled believers to make sure that our votes count. Does that make sense? Yeah. To make sure that we are um, doing our very best to put things in the right place. Because as I look at these incredible... Uh, mums up here and I look around the room and I'm, I'm just like so grateful that you're all here and there's some stats that actually really break my heart. Since 1998 there has been some 200,000 200, lives lost to legalised abortion in WA alone. In WA alone. That's 8,000 a year, that's heartbreaking. I wouldn't want any of you not to be here. And I'm not judging anything, I'm not doing anything like that, trying to sway anybody in any way, shape or form. But God created you, created me, he breathes life. That's what God does. And I just feel quite compelled to, to on Mother's Day, weird time to do this, but um, just really be praying into, uh, you know, what your responsibility as a child of God, as a believer, when it comes to um, who's making the rules in our country. Is that all right? Sorry about that, guys. It's, uh... Anyway, back to fun stuff. Back to some fun stuff. Panel questions. All righty, all right. Who wants to go first? We'll give you all, a, all uh, a few questions here. All right, Rosemary, the wonderful Rosemary. I'm going to move back so everybody can see you. Um, <laughs> we can move the flowers. There's, um, there's a devotional thing, our, our daily bread devotional thing that um, I like to read along with. And um, if you read tomorrow's devotion, the um, sunflowers will be part of your devotion. There you go. Deers and sunflowers. Don't know why I was reading tomorrow's devotion. Where's the deers? But, it, but it was a good one. And the deer, if you need the deer, I should have got a, I've got a, de a deer in my office. Oh dear. <laughs> Rosemary, can you, if, for those of you who don't know, um, Rosemary is Simon's mum. 
uh, and has, uh, you know, no, it's not the only, um, the only arrow that she, that she has. She's got uh, other children. But Rosemary, can you, um, can you share with us um, what you do and have done to actively um, um, encourage your children in their faith? Well, I think example is one of the biggest things. Um, if my faith is strong, my children should have a stronger faith as well because they, they look at their mums and see them um, as they are, um, and what they do and how they do it. And we're often trying to copy so if, you're, if you set a good example, they will want to copy that good example. Yeah, great. I think that's... Excellent. Love that. Model it. Walk yes. it out yourself. Yes. Very cool. Very cool. Love that. Uh, Annie Dawn, same question for you. How have you um, sort of actively... Yeah, that's very good. Thank you, Rosemary. How have you um, gone about actively teaching your children about God, about Jesus? Um, what, like Rosemary said... Um, when my children were young, I was a Sunday school teacher, so they were part of my Sunday school class. So right from early age, they uh, grew up in the Word of God. They grew up uh, learning about the Bible, learning about how to be a Christian and how to be a good person. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, uh, when you can do that with your kids when they're young, um, they, then they, they succeed in life because they've got that foundation where the Lord is with them. Great. And uh, so they learn to trust in him and try to model um, being a good person. So as they go through primary school and then when they get to high school, they sort of struggle a little bit. Yeah. And it's like Rosemary said, modelling. So if you're modelling um, to being a good Christian mum, you must always be that a good mm. Christian mum because yeah. uh, for us to learn others about how to be a Christian, we have to live a Christian life. Yeah. We have to act like a Christian. Mm. No matter what circumstance, no matter what situation, we always must portray being a Christian and I mean it's it's hard because we're only human um, yeah. but we we can always um, just always model that being a Christian and just because kids everyone's looking at us yeah mm. very so good so if we're not um, being that person that we should be we're not yeah. going to have any effect on anyone are we that's true mm. that's true um, Evelyn can you also speak to that same question in terms of um, what you've done even um, you know sort of specific things that you've laid out for your children so that they can grow in their faith? Yeah, um, for me, again, it's modelling, living it out. Um, so with little ones, um, early childhood trained, we believe that the first five years are the most critical in the child's life. So the foundation you lay for them will go on for the rest of their lives. Um, so like when they're fighting, talking about problem solving, then we come across talking about forgiveness, you know, what is forgiveness? Because they learn it at Sunday school. Uh, we do it through music. Um, Sunday school songs and also in the car you know we talk about God and we pray on our way to school mm. so just incorporating it in, um, in your daily life I guess and it's not just when you sit down and do some teaching it's living it out yeah, mm. yeah. fantastic thank you that's really good mm. and Christy um, uh, I would agree with all that I think for me as well so um, as the kids are getting older they, uh, their influence is not necessarily just mum and dad and the family anymore, but their influence is outside. So for me, I am trying to teach my kids, and I'm saying this, and disclaimer is that I'm not perfect, but to question everything. So the Bible, like, so I grew up in a Christian home and um, I believe the Bible because I was brought up that, but I wasn't really, I didn't really question much. So sometimes when you get a bit older and people kind of come, oh, why do you believe? I knew that I did believe, but I didn't know why I believed mm. what I believed. Mm. So I think if you can build that into the kids as they get older, it's not just a, oh, I believe, but they can come up against adversity mm. and questions as to why they believe. Mm. And I think the more questions they ask, the more answers they get about how real God is, how true God is, and it actually builds their faith stronger so I think just getting them to ask the questions, like, um, yeah, so that's, that's kind of how I'm hoping to do that with my... And, and it's also an age thing. Like in the Bible, it says you give a baby milk, you, like adults can't have milk, but babies also can't chew on 
like state because they mm. can't get the nutrients from it. So it's also age appropriate as well. So. Mm. Great, love that. Yeah. Always, mm. oh, and that's uh, having a hope for. You. <laughs> we need to have a, a an answer for the hope that we carry. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Love that. And that underlying theme really is really good. It's intentional, right? You, none of those things that any of these mums have sort of shared. It's all intentional. You can't do it by accident necessarily. You have got to be proactive in it. Really cool. I love that. Um, so, um, Arnie, Don, can you share with us um, what you've learned about or, or um, what maybe even what God's revealed or enlightened you to, given you revelation about in terms of like releasing your children as they get older, um, you know, and, um, you know, it becomes uh, their own thoughts, own lives, own things, kids do ups and downs, all of that, and they make their own choices. But what have you learned personally about releasing your children and letting them go and grow? Trusting in God. Yeah. And having that, um, just trust God because, you know, as our kids grow up, I'm, my children are 43, 41 and 33, so I have adult children now. Yeah. Um, and I'd like to think that I, um, you know, made a difference to those kids. Um, I have my oldest daughter, she's a very strong, very independent uh, young lady. Melissa being my middle child is a very strong, I have very intelligent kids. Yeah. My two daughters are just really smart girls. But my son caused me a little bit of grief. Yeah. It was a little bit <laughs> different. And uh, even though he was the one that um, I had the most to do in church, I'm, you know, I made my, not made, I made my kids stay in church until they was about 16. Yeah. Um, so I believe, so that foundation, um, going through all of those years, uh, growing and learning. And uh, so when now that they're in adulthood, I can release my kids because I've invested in them, I've prayed mm. for them, I've um, tried to do the best I could for them as a mother. Yeah. Um, and so now releasing them, and now that watching Melissa and Travis being parents of their own and having their own children, um, I'd like to think that I instilled something in them too mm. to be good yeah. parents. You yeah, know, I love that. Mm. Just trusting them now and watching them as adults being parents trust in the Lord to yeah. be with them and to do um, and guide them. Love that. Mm. So good. And I love the, um, the term you use, invest in them. Mm. Invest in their, in their future, invest into their children. And you know something that's actually really quite exciting is that um, only, only a few weeks ago we had child dedications mm. right here uh, and about where you're sitting is about where your son was standing with his children as they were dedicating them to the Lord too. Mm. So uh, good investment. Good investment. Praise God, hey? Praise God. <laughs> Rosemary, would you share with us on the same question about what you've learned about releasing and letting your, uh, your children go and grow? Well, um, I think you've got to learn sometimes that you're not the important one, that your child is more important than you because of what you have done for them, mm. they then can carry that on to the next generation and it goes on and on and on like this. Um, and just being there if you're needed, don't push yourself onto them because you are more likely to drive them away. Yeah. So be there for them if they want you um, and be ready for that, but don't push it. Yeah. Don't push it at all because you will just push them away. Yeah, yeah, that's really good. Mm. Love that. Stability. Stability. Very good. <laughs> All right. Um, Christy, could you share uh, a little bit uh, of what maybe, I don't know if it's an advice thing or something that you've learned about, um, about parenting and marriage, the way that, that you know, this, the structure of that and um, benefits? Um, it's really, I turned 40 this year and I keep waiting to be old enough to make decisions on my own. Like, my, <laughs> like <laughs> it's really weird to think that my kids are nearly grown up and I'm still feel like, so I, I don't really have, I don't know, it's, it's all a journey and it's all so different. Um, and I guess, uh, the, I didn't actually spend much time on this question, but... <laughs> There are so many different styles of parenting and marriage mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. everything that we can sit up here and we can kind of go, oh, this, this and this, and we kind of put it in a formula. And I think this is where um, 
relationship is so important because relationship is so individual and different and we need to be so um in tune with communication with the other person Mm -hmm. um with people around us i think communication is the biggest thing so with my kids like they can be at home and i can have one really good conversation with my my daughter i had a conversation with my 16 year old or 15 year old the other day and just that one conversation revealed so much about everything that she's going through right now and even with um in marriage like you need that communication to be able to i don't know like build and move on and understand them so i think like communication is such a i don't know it's such a common thing but it's one of the most overlooked and but really is um, yeah things in any relationship parenting marriage everything and um yeah yeah, good, c- clear communication. Mm. Yeah. Because the kids get good at coming and asking me for one thing and then uh, going to mum and saying, Dad said it was okay. <laughs> I didn't say it was okay. I probably went, what? Ask your mum. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not allowed to make that decision. The kids also know to ask Aaron for things when he's watching TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, come and ask me when I'm distracted. It'll be yeah, good. Right. It'll be really good. It'll be really good. Excellent. Um, Evelyn, can you share on that same that same topic of um, you know the parenting, being a mother, but then the in the the you know the marriage sort of dynamic as well with your parenting and and your own growth even as well, and and how the marriage supports that. All right. Um, well, marriage is a relationship where the other one is always right, and the <laughs> other one is the husband. <laughs> 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 Very good. But no, in and sorry about that. <laughs> I just say that joke. That's yeah. good. She said joke. Business, but, um, yeah. Marriage, <laughs> marriage is a one. journey uh, for me. Um, being you know young and married with four kids, um, I have to always you know admit that I don't know everything. Um, always being open to communicate. Um, it, it's a journey, and one thing may work, another time it may not work. So you mm. have to be open to, you know, discussing certain things and moving on. Forgiveness is one of them. Um, making mistakes, errors, all that stuff. Um, it's all part of it. It's all part of the journey. You also have to understand that it's not you against the other person. It's the two of you against the world and the forces yeah. that is around mm. you or outside. Mm. Um, so you've got to try for protect your home your family your marriage because yeah. if mum and dad are stronger together the children will be strong as well that's right and society mm. as well yeah yeah love that love that and it's so true isn't it the the, the better your um relationships going your marriage is going the easier it becomes to um bring your children up when you're at loggerheads with one another it just becomes really difficult yeah. um and yeah it doesn't work Rosemary, you've had some um, some experience with um, obviously parenting and marriage, and in, even in ministry as well. So it would have been something that um, you know, and your husband was pastoring and all of that kind of thing. Sometimes you can feel like you're under the microscope a little bit. People yeah. are watching your parenting style and that kind yeah, of thing. Yeah. Um, so how important for you was you know is the marriage was the marriage relationship with your parenting? I think. It's one of the main things um, to support it because um, if your marriage is strong, your relationship with your children will be stronger yeah, yeah. because of it. And so um, if, we, if you don't have a strong relationship with your spouse, then you're, there's going to be a weakness with your children as well. Mm-hmm. And that's going to um, reflect on them so that they can't, really pull everything together and get the right balance and the right shape of things. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's very good. Yeah. Very good. I love that. I love, um, you know, the, the one of the things that um, it's kind of become apparent to me in my parenting is that my, um, my daughters, by watching me and how Christy and I interact, my daughters learn um, how uh, 
a, a, how a, a husband treats a wife mm. and they learn how a wife treats a husband um, and unfortunately it doesn't always mean that it's the right way. They're learning by watching what we do mm. and so we need to be aware of that and our son's the same. So um, I think that that's something to be very aware of. Did you want to speak to that? I was just going to speak into it as well because I'm also aware that we have single parents here as well. Yeah. And I think it's for me personally, single parents are probably the biggest heroes for me because yeah. I look at I look at Aaron yeah. and I'm not saying mm. that a, a father is not important, but I look at Aaron and I... So I'm at home and I'm doing all the things and Aaron comes home and I'm like, oh, oh my gosh, like a bit of relief. <laughs> These single parents, they're, they're doing everything on their own. Yeah. Yes. And then to bring them to church, to build yeah. them up, like I just want to acknowledge that and encourage that as well for you. Yeah. And um, I just don't want to make yeah, it sound like so you're good. doing mm. anything wrong as well. I, I, no, that's right. I, yeah, that yeah, is the fact so that you good. bring them here on your own and yeah. you, you, you're filling two roles right now is admirable. Yeah, yeah. Can we just get, yeah, appreciate them. Very good. Love that. Okay, this one's um, an important one, so I'll get everybody to speak to this. So we'll start with Arnie Dawn. Um, how do you uh, find your own time um, for both God and fun? And even if you were to, like, cycle back maybe a few years, obviously now with grown-up kids, uh, you, you know, it's a little bit different. But when you were in the thick of it and, you know making lunches and school runs and sport and all of this kind of thing in the, the busyness of life, um, what did you do to s ensure your relationship with God but also um, a healthy, fun freedom for yourself? Well, I'm a bit of a superwoman. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. I can do a lot of things at one time. Um, life gets busy. Uh, work gets busy. Um, you know, so, like... I retired a couple of years ago from work. I worked in a school for 30 years with kids, so I was constantly seeing this cycle of uh, different children uh, mm. coming through the school system. So we had beautiful kids, we had um, strong kids, we had secure kids, smart kids, and then we had the broken and the lost and the mm. troubled. And so, you know, I, I had an opportunity. I was working with all kinds of kids, and uh, that keeps you going. Um, mm. So when you, it's good to work with the good kids, because, you, you know, you can just work with good kids and they'll just make life easy. But I love working with the broken and the damaged kids. Yeah. Um, so for me to be um, a role model to those kids, they had to see me as being somebody different. Sure. So I always maintained my... Um, uh, I, I always wanted to be a role model. I wanted these kids to see that there was something different in me. Yeah. I, I loved on these kids. I pray on these kids. Yeah. Um, whatever opportunity I got, I would pray with them and I'd tell them about the Lord. And you know, I crossed a lot of um, lines and got in trouble a bit. But kids need to know that no matter where they are in life, yeah. Jesus is there for them. All and the time. if we don't tell them, how are they going to know? Mm. Yeah. So mm. when my life used to get busy like that and working with all these kids, and uh, that just made me a stronger person. So for me to be that person in the school or wherever, to be a positive role model and a Christian woman, I would need to be setting that example. So for yeah. me to get my strength, you know, would be to go and uh, read a book. or um, I love... Um, mixing with elder people because I love learning from the um, older generation, yeah. their wisdom and their knowledge. I yeah. really seek um, older people that I can learn from, um, you know, and listening to music and just really, because if you're working with kids like that, I've got to be strong. Yeah. I need backup behind me um, to make a difference for those kids. So, so good. Staying close to God, having that knowledge, that strength, and the faith and being able to make a difference in yeah, the Yeah, I love that. Life. Very good. Mm. Very good. Mm. Very good. And Evelyn, how about you? You're in that, uh, you know, season with young children um, and, and they're amazing kids and very very well behaved, actually. They're at my house the other week and they're very well behaved. Not, I'm not saying anybody else's aren't. <laughs> just saying that they are well, well behaved, good kids. But how do you um, find time for... You know, what do you put in your life so you still have your time with God and still feel like you've got your own identity and, you know, fun as well? Yeah, so for me, first thing first, when you wake up, you sit and meditate and thank God for the day and declare positive yeah. for the day before, mm -hmm. before I step out of the bed and, you know, into the kitchen. Um, 
and I always make sure that I get myself looking good before I step out because when you look good you feel good yeah and got the gym as well in the first thing in the morning great um yeah that's what I do also for f other things like fun because you know Monday to Friday working you've got the kids non-stop so you have to schedule it in for the fun and if you don't put time aside it just doesn't happen mm. so things like talking to hubby about you know this is what's happening i need some time out and he's really supportive that's yeah. the best thing um he lets me go and hang out with the friends yeah or great go to you know just hang out with my friends for yeah. dinner or whatever um or maybe just get a baby sometimes get a babysitter and then we have a time out so investing in a babysitter with young kids it's the best thing yeah that you can give so your good to. <laughs> love that um as much as it's you know it's family it's children it's chaotic you have to have time to recharge and music as well is something that i love to listen to yeah um turn it on really loud and maybe clean my room while the kids are out but it makes me you know rejuvenate yeah i love <laughs> yeah. that very mm -hmm. good yeah excellent very good <laughs> christy how do you what do you do to find time for god and for fun um at the moment i'm pretty um i'm pretty pretty good for time because all my kids are at school um, and I, during the week, I'm just at home um, try, trying to prepare. So I've kind of had a bit of a, a thing at the moment where I'm like, okay, what am I supposed to be doing in this season of my life? Like, what, like, what job am I meant to do? And at the moment, I don't have the answer. So I'm trying to be just the best mum I can be. So kind of meal plan. So I hate pre prepping meals and getting all that stuff ready. It just drives me insane. Like, <laughs> what are we having every single night for dinner until I die? It's just <laughs> draining. <laughs> Um, so I try and prepare um, the week so that when the kids are home, I'm more with more with them. And um, but because, um, but for me, being organised is actually a self care f thing for me. Like I I enjoy cleaning when I'm on my own. Like I put the music on and I clean. Um, I go out with friends for coffee or brunch is my favourite. If anyone wants to take me out for brunch, um, <laughs> but um, yeah, I think. That's probably at, at the moment I've got time to be able to do that. So it's not um, something that I have to find mm. um, find to do. So um, listen to a podcast or something. So mm. that's um, yeah. But I know I know when I had the kids at home all the time, you just find moments all the time. Like have a shower, listen to a podcast in a shower. Yeah. Like um, um, Aaron, I know Aaron takes self care in the bathroom. Like like going mm. really? Why are you spending forty five minutes in the toilet after dinner when everyone else is clearing up? But <laughs> self care. <laughs> Um, well, so. you, did, you did just say that you like cleaning on your own, so I release you to do that. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but yeah, there, I guess it's just finding um, time of life. I guess cycle of life, the best, yeah. the best time. Mornings are not great for me. No. Um, at all. Um, but I also just got a dog, so um, going for a walk with the dog's probably good. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Except when yeah. the kids come along. <laughs> They're fun too. So for those of you who don't know, um, Christy actually went through a bit of a, a health ordeal um, some time ago and really miraculous that she's even here, um, you know, excessive treat, chemotherapy, all of that stuff um, and a, a, literally a miracle, walking miracle and I'm sure, every, in fact, every lady sitting here would have a testimony of being a miracle <laughs> without a doubt. Good. But it's good. And occasionally we go through things in life that um, it really we need to be grateful to God for. And I know that sounds funny, you know, your wife getting sick and, you know, almost dying and all of that, grateful to God for. But what it does is it helps us, uh, reminds us of how important it is to spend time together. Mm. So we, uh, we, we have rules about spending time together. So we have a date day every week. We spend time together, just Christy and I, kids off doing their thing at school or whatever and we, we'll go out, she likes brunch and I like eating too so that <laughs> works for me. Um, but it, you know, in God's um, graciousness, he allows us to see how precious the people close to us are mm. um, and we need to make time for that. Very cool. Rosemary, can you uh, also speak to the same question, um, what you do to find time for God and fun? It's quite hard sometimes um, to try and fit it all in. Um, there is a time and you've got to learn 
yourself what time is available for this and that and the other in turn and j just be there. Um, I, I, I found it hard because um, my spouse wanted um, time with me and used to say, can't you keep m your child quiet? <laughs> <laughs> Simon. <laughs> so I used to sit him in front of television. It was the only thing I could do so I could spend time with my husband. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's difficult. And I didn't like doing that. I, w I would much rather have had the three of us as one together because that's important. And I think my husband... Uh, would have been much better if he could have learned to have accepted Simon as part of of the family. Yeah, yeah, the mm. unit. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's and good. Yeah, so anyway. So scheduling is important. Yeah, it is. Very good, <laughs> very good. And that unity is important. It really yeah, is to go is. out together. Yeah. That's fun. We were walking um, on Saturday. We took the kids to. Um, to soccer, a couple of them were playing soccer. Yeah. And um, it was one of the rare occasions that most of the kids were together. I have our older son, Brody, he was away doing his exams for, yeah. he's joining the federal police. Oh. So um, I was in jail, and now he'll be able to put me in jail. <laughs> Bless his cotton socks. Um, but uh, that's right. But he um, he wasn't with us. But I was watching. Um, you know, like you have little pictures sometimes <laughs> where you're looking, and it's kind of like a postcard. And then you go, oh, this is actually my life. You know, my wife with the dog, and the little kids trailing along, mm -hmm. and everyone seemed happy for a moment in time. It was like a wormhole, like an anomaly. <laughs> everyone was happy and smiling. And I was like, man, God's good. God is good. Then Very we got good. In the car. And then we got in the car. That's right. <laughs> And it begins. <laughs> right. Hi. Okay. Hi. Hey. Sorry, I'm just reenacting yesterday's car ride. <laughs> alrighty, alrighty, alrighty. Here's a, here's a, um, here's a, here's one um, that we'll go again. We'll go through the list, starting with um, Annie Dawn. If you could go back in time, what advice would you give yourself? <laughs> um, I always tried to be a positive, uh, caring, nice person. Uh, being a part, being a Noongar woman, um, and being a part of a Noongar family, um, we, and I was only sharing with Simon this morning, that we all contribute to our families. Yeah. So if we've got a problem over here, we're all over there trying to sort it out. So um, I think being a little bit too involved. Um, if I could go back and change anything, I don't know. Um, I don't feel I've changed a lot. I've, 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 I've not changed. I tried to be a positive role model. I, I tried not to do anything um, that my kids could hang over my head. I don't think they have anything that yep. they could <laughs> say about me. Um, I'm not perfect. It's all right. Next, promise. next week they're coming in. We're going to interview yeah, them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think. I've I always strive to be the person that um, anybody can come to for advice or, yeah. or um, a problem to be solved. Very good. Um, I think I've just been too caring, uh, too caring and too open and ready and willing to help somebody out. Sure. Sometimes maybe I should hold back and just um, let them sort it out themselves. Yeah. That's yeah, good. Mm. Otherwise they're not going to grow from it. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, no, um, I've, um, had a f I've got a few regrets where I stayed away from the Lord for a little while, but... Um, Trying to make up for it now and um, sure. trying to be the person that God wants me to be. Excellent. I strive for every day. Yeah, yeah. Excellent. Love that. Very good. Mm. Evelyn, if you could go back in time and speak to yourself, what would be the advice that you could you'd give yourself? I am still in time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, well, before children, um, maybe save. Save, save, save lots of money. <laughs> um, it's never, you can never have enough. Can I never have enough? But listen, I'm asking for money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I wish I had saved um, some money. Um, <coughs> maybe travel before having children, something that I wish I could have done. But in regards to parenting, um, I feel that 
my childhood and everything that's happened needed to happen mm. for me to become who I am today. Yeah, right. So really, I wouldn't have changed that. Yeah. But at this point in my life, I can't travel that far to be like, I wish this was different. Sure. Somehow. Um, but yeah, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Honey, is there some advice you would give yourself you would like to have gleaned other than the lotto numbers if we played lotto? I was just going to say invest in Pfizer or something, but um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, don't, I don't know. I think, I think probably just like soak it in while you're there. I think so. Sometimes I look back at life and I'm like, oh my gosh, like my kids are older. Have I done enough? Have I invested enough? Have I been intentional enough? Because I yeah. don't know, sometimes days can just kind of just turn into another day, which turn into another day, and the next thing you know, like, life's just passed. So I think Make the most, most simple would be just kind of just absorb each day and take each day, like, even mm. if at the end of the day, kind of, I know, at our dinner table, sometimes when we're sitting around, it'd be like, what's the best thing that happened in your day? Like, kind of, I don't know, maybe just make each day count, I guess. Is yeah, probably that's the good. biggest thing that I could, I could say. Yeah, I like yeah. that. Yeah, that's good. Make each day count. Well done. Mm. And Rosemary, what about you? If you could uh, give your your younger self some advice, what would it what would it be? Well, um, I think forget about yesterday. Mm. Look look towards tomorrow and see what you can do to improve everything you do or you say you say or believe in. Um, let it be better than what it could have been in the past, yeah. what it was in the past, um, that tomorrow is always going to be better. And if you look at it as like that, that it's going to be better, then because you believe that, it will be. Great. And I think very often thinking something makes it come about yeah. to a certain extent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah, very good. Love that. Awesome. Well done. So, um, if you could, if you, you've got an opportunity, right, this is, wasn't a question that I gave you any prep time for or anything like that. You have um, an opportunity, if this was the uh, last opportunity you had to speak to uh, everybody here and you were thinking of one, uh, one piece uh, of wisdom, one tip, one... Uh, encouragement, something that um, you would want to leave if you were to not get to speak to anybody else here ever again, what would you want to share with them? Rosemary, you go first. Um, well, I think just be who you are. Don't try and change things because you probably make it worse, not better anyway. Um, so just be who you are. God has made you as you are. Yeah. Believe in that. Wonderful. Just believe that he has created you to do what he wants you to do. Just flow with it. Just let it come. Very and, good. And it will, it will come. You don't yeah. have to um, worry or um, get head up about things because it will just make it worse. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's good. I love that. I love that. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. Yes. Go absolutely. with it. Just cruise with it. Very good. Love that. Yeah. Christy? Um, I guess my advice would be... Um, Parenting's not an Instagram story, <laughs> so um, it doesn't always look good. Um, I often question, am I doing the right thing? Um, am I being a good mum? And I think so long as you keep asking those questions, it gives you room to improve. So I guess um, that would probably be my thing is God's given us our, our kids to be parents to those kids. So, mm. yeah, I, th I think that would be my advice is you've got a purpose and none of us are perfect, but if we keep... Um, Answering the phone. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> if we um, if we keep going, am I doing the right thing? Is this like how can I do better? Um, I think as soon as you think, oh, this is this is it, and this is all that's going to happen, then you're kind of limiting yourself. But I think yeah. as soon as you you question, and it's kind of like a an audit, um, like yeah, what you I love do, that. like it's just mm. to make sure that you keep doing better. Because one thing that I've noticed with my kids is. I think I've got it right with one and then I've got another kid that's a complete opposite and you're like, oh gosh, I have to do something different with this one, goodness. And I've got four of them, so it's like a, it's really, it's not easy. Um, but I think that would be, my thing is just, you're doing, you're doing okay. Yeah, love that. The humility and teachability. Mm. Yeah. Constantly learning and growing. Yeah, mm. even if the kids tell you you're yeah, crap. <laughs> <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> yeah. Very Boring. good. 
Very yeah. good, it is. Love that. Very good. Uh, Evelyn, what would you, a little piece of advice for us or encouragement or something? Um, while there's life, there is hope. And life is for the living. Mm. Um, take every opportunity you have to do your very best, to bless others mm. wherever you can, um, give wherever you can. Um, challenges will come, but at the end of the day, you've got to know there's a God who is bigger and greater, mm. and leave it up to Him. He can handle it. Mm. Just yeah. pray. That's all you can do. Love that. Mm. Love that. Very good. Very good. Ani Dawn? Proverbs 22.6. Direct your children into the right path, and when they are older, they will not leave it. Mm. It's a promise. Yeah. You know, and as, like, as our kids grow up, talking as a mother, um, we never... Um, we always want the best for our kids and even when they're adults we still want to be involved with them but you know we have to take a little bit there's only so much we can do because they've got to grow themselves but trusting in God to be with your children and you know just to bless them and you just want all the right good things for our children but Mm. as a Christian Mm. in the church is to just use our gifts what God's given us use it you know Um, share it um, so that we can see the reward of it um, as, a, as a person sitting in a church, you know, um, every day I strive, I have one rule every day that I try to go out and find one person that I can tell about Jesus every single day of my life. Yeah, and that's love something that. that I'm never going to stop doing because if we're in part of a, we're part of a church, we have a job to do. Yeah. Just mm. do what we can do with the, with the best of our abilities that God has given us. Love it. We've mm. all got a gift and we can all contribute because mm. Jesus is coming back Amen. very soon. Yeah. So good. Love that. Yeah. Love that. Yeah. Very good. And that is living out the, the actual vision statement for our church, which is uh, adopt people into the family of God every day. That's what we're called to do and be. Um, can we thank these guys for um, sharing with us? We're just so grateful. Um, stick with us for a moment. But um, as um, Dawn was speaking, it reminded me of something I must have heard somewhere along the way. Is that, um, if you're not dead, God's not done. <laughs> He's not done. If you're not dead, he's not done. Uh, And I heard another one just the other day where it said, um, if it's not good, God's not done. So if you're in a season where things aren't quite where, where, you know, they should be, and you know that that's not the picture God has painted, then God hasn't finished yet. He's still working in and through your life, which is really good. Um, Just in, uh, we're going to wrap up in a moment, but... um, there was a scripture I was reading this morning that I uh, just wanted to share with everybody. Excuse me as we finish. In uh, 1 Corinthians, um, this is 1 Corinthians 13, is a, uh, often a piece of scripture that we um, use in weddings and things like that. It talks about love and um, how love is so important and this kind of thing. But there's... Uh, a, a little piece here, a couple of verses that just remind me of the uh, anointing that is uh, on a mum. And it says, love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It's not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. I just thought that's a real picture of um, mother, mothers. Mums seem to have all of those attributes when they're taking care of their kids to love and endure and to hope for the best in them, to be patient and kind and persevere, uh, which is really cool can we just thank these guys again i'm just so grateful uh, for all your time and all of that kind of thing um we're about to uh finish up uh the the service this morning um but i do want to encourage um everybody to hang around there is uh gelato uh, uh ice cream out there at the ice cream truck and people to 